Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Eddie G, with another Photoshop tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you a quick and easy way for a really cool text effect to have a retro feel to have your final document look just like this. Okay guys, in this video, I'm going to show you a quick and easy method to turn any text to give it a nice retro look, depending on if you're making a YouTube thumbnail or any other kind of graphic design element for a customer or your own brand that wants it to give that retro look. So obviously we're going to start out in a Photoshop document here, and I've got this one set up to be 1920 by 1080. And again, if you've watched any of my tutorials in the past, you know I just like to work in the standard high definition format. So for our retro look, first of all, I just want to create a quick background. So what I've done is I've just created this nice pale blue with a little bit of a spotlight effect here to give it an overall retro look that I'm going for. So again, we're talking about a text effect tutorial here. So the first thing we need is some text. So I'm just going to come over here and type out the word retro. Now I'm going to make that just a little bit bigger so it fits here in my entire document. And obviously, I want everybody out there to be able to see this tutorial. Okay, now that we have our text centered in our document, what we're going to do is we're actually going to put a gradient overlay on it. So I'm going to go over here and in my retro text layer, I'm going to double click to bring up the layer options panel. And I'm going to come here to gradient overlay. Now, what you want to do is you want to set your blend mode to linear burn, your opacity at 100%. You want to make sure that the align with layer box is checked and the style is gonna be linear at 90%. Now you wanna come over here and on your gradient, you're gonna come down here to the gradient type and we're obviously gonna do a solid. And we're gonna come down here and we're gonna set the colors to a kind of a dark pink all the way up to a light pink. And the colors that I've chosen for the dark pink are gonna be B71, B2E. And for the light pink, I have gone with F495BE. So once you have your gradient set, you can go ahead and click on OK and get out of that. But what we're going to do here is we're going to come back to this retro text layer and we're going to right click on it and we're going to convert that into a smart object. So what that's going to do is it's going to be a non-destructive way. So you can come in here and change this text and every layer effect that we put on this from that point on, whatever word that we type in now that we've converted it to a smart object will take on those layer properties. So again, I'm going to come back over here to my uh, my retro text layer, and I'm going to double click out here in this open area, and that's going to bring up my layer style panel. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to put a stroke on this. So I'm going to click on my stroke, and you want to give it like a nice light, light pink color. So for this tutorial, I chose FDD. 6d6 and i'm going to get a click on okay now you can come in here and you can mess around with the font but the biggest thing is i mean the size of the the stroke not the font so the biggest thing here is the size and the position you want it so you don't want it on the outside because that's not the look we're going for you don't want it in the center because it gives it a little bit of a thicker stroke and it's not going to give us that retro look so i've chosen inside for this and i'm going to mess around with the size here and I like it right around the seven or eight. So I'm going to keep it set to seven. And again, my position is going to be inside and my blend mode is going to be normal. So now that we have a stroke, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to give it an inner shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the inner shadow. And we want to make sure that this is set to pure black. And the blend mode, again, is going to be set to linear burn. Because if we come in here and do a normal one, it's not going to give it that depth that we're looking for for this retro look. So I'm going to bring this down. And again, we're going to set it to linear blur. And you want to make sure the opacity is somewhere in the middle. So around 50, maybe even 60%. Let's see what it looks like at 60 here getting a little too dark so i'm going to leave it set to 50 percent actually now the angle you want is 120 percent now the distance this is going to be up to you but it's always going to give it that embossed and beveled look so it's going to give it like it's indented into the document so the the bigger you go the deeper it's going to look in the document but once you get up above about 20 25 it starts to lose the look that we're going for so i'm going to bring this back down to about 15 pixels or so i like it right there we're going to leave the choke at zero and the next one that we're going to look at is the size of the 
the inner glow. So I have to get it set to about 30%. So if you get a little bit too much bigger than 30%, again, it starts to lose that retro look that we're going for. So we're going to go ahead and leave that set to 30%. Now, the next layer style that we're going to add to this is an actual an inner glow. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and you can see it actually darkened it up there. So the first thing that you're going to look at is the structure of this inner glow, right? So just like our inner shadow, we're going to set the blend mode to linear burn. Because again, if we come up here to normal, it doesn't really give it that retro look. It kind of just pales it out. So I'm going to bring it back down to my blend mode into linear burn. Now the opacity, you don't want to really set it too high because it's going to start to really fade out the colors. You can see here I'm up about 28, 30% and it's really losing what we're looking for here. So I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to set this inner glow of opacity to about 50%. Nope, I'm sorry, about 15% actually. <laughs> and the noise we're going to leave set to zero. Now, when we come down here, the technique and the elements, I'm actually going to leave set to softer and center. The choke is going to be at zero. And I like the size of this inner glow set at 20 pixels. And the range I like set at 50 pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that there. Now, the next thing that we're actually going to do to actually give it this retro feel is we're going to do a pattern overlay. Now you can come in here and you can choose a couple of different patterns. So if you come in here, obviously on this one, we want to set the blend mode to normal and you want the opacity down pretty low because the higher you get, the more it really just takes away from the overall effect. As you can see here, I'm going to all the way up to 100% just looks awful. Even around 45 or 50, it doesn't look good. So I like it right around that 15% opacity. Now you can come over here and you can try out a couple of these actual pattern overlays. So this is the first one here, although this one out here on the end kind of looks cool. But for the retro look that I'm going for, I like this kind of linear line look. So I'm going to leave it set to that one. Now we could leave it just like this and this text actually looks pretty retro. It looks like something you would see from an ad from like the 50s or the, maybe even the 40s. But we are missing one really important detail on this. And it's one of my favorites if you've ever watched any of my tutorials and that's adding a drop shadow because what it's going to do is it's really going to make this thing pop and it's really going to make it jump off the page. So I'm going to turn on the drop shadow. Now, if, again, if you've watched any of my tutorials in the past, you know the blend mode for my drop shadow is always on multiply. You could come in here and do normal. You can come in here and try to do dissolve, but that doesn't look good. It's just a personal preference for me that I like multiply. And I'm going to leave the opacity set at 100% and our drop shadow as always is going to be set to black. Now I like the angle at about 135 because it gives it that nice kind of left to right drop shadow that I like to see on my text. Now you can come in here and you can mess with the distance. You can turn it up, but the further away it goes, it actually loses a bit of that retro feel and looks like something a little bit different. So I like it right around the 30 pixel for the distance and the spread, I leave it 0%. And a lot of times when I'm looking for this nice subtle drop shadow, I like to set the size at the same as the distance. So I've got my distance set at 30 pixels and I've got my size set at 30 pixels. So if I come over here and click on okay, now you can see we have this nice retro feel text, quick and easy. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, make sure to smash that subscribe button and give me a like. And if you have any questions, drop them down in the comment section. And until then, guys, we'll see you on the next video.